All right, in this video, we'll be continuing on our discussion of linked lists, and we'll be covering the operation of deletion in this video. So if you haven't seen the previous video on linked lists, we introduced that data structure and also covered the insertion operation. So as always, the code for this, as well as all the other videos in the series, will be in the uh, GitHub link, which should be found below in the description to this video. So the first variant of deleting a node in a singly linked list is one that's specified in the following way. So we're given a key or a data field, and we want to delete the node that has the data field uh, with, with whatever the key is. So for instance, maybe we have a list that looks kind of like this, and we want to delete the node with data field B. If that is the case, we go through the list, we find the node with that data field in the node, and we delete that node from the list. And the resulting list in this case is a list that looks like this. So just to make this a little bit easier, we're going to assume that the elements, the data elements of the linked list are unique. So there's no duplicates of A's, B's, or C's, or anything like that. And we're going to use that as our criteria for deleting a node. So in order for us to take care of this, there's two cases to be considered. One is that the node that we're looking at is actually the head of the list. And the other case is that the node that we're that we want to delete is not the head. So those two cases need to be handled separately because they have, uh, I guess the, the head, the case where it's the head, it's a bit of an edge case. And we want to make sure that we account for that. So let's take a look at the case actually when the node that we want to delete is actually the head. So in this case, we have a list that looks like this. We want to delete this head node where the data element is A. So basically what we want to do is this is the node that we're given. They say if the element contains A, delete it. It's the head node. What we want to do is the first thing is we want to change where the head pointer is pointing to. So for removing this node, it's no longer the head of the list because it's to be deleted. So the first thing that we can do is we can remove this head pointer to the next node over. So we move it to this node over here. And then we can go ahead and remove this uh, pointer from I guess the next pointer from the original head node to point to nothing and then just set this node equal to null. And if we do that, then the resulting list is equal to this list right here. So before we go on to the other case, let's actually go minimize this and uh, code that up. So what we'll do is we will create a function called delete node. It's a class method and it will take self and also the uh, data element that we're looking for. We'll actually call this key. So what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, we're going to check if the head node is the node to be deleted. So let's actually just define this variable called current node, which will set equal to the head of the list. And in this thing here, we're going to check if the current node is not none. So if basically if the list is not empty, and if the data of the current node, in this case, the current node is head, if the current node.data is equal to the key that we seek, then we need to go through our steps that we outlined in this, uh, in this visual right here. So the first step is we need to change head to point to the next node in the list. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we do is we say self.head is equal to current node dot next. So we're setting the head equal to the next node in the list. And then the next thing that we can do is we can say current node is equal to none. And then we can just return. So current node setting that equal to none will essentially get rid of the element here. So we've moved the head to the next element in the list, setting that equal to none removes it from the list altogether. So that is that. And that's how we account for that situation. Now we need to think about the other case where we want to delete a node that is not a head node. So let's consider the initial example that we considered in the beginning when we want to delete, let's say, the, the node B. So it's not the head node. So this is our list again. We're given this list. And it's a multi-step process. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to, I guess the next step, what we need to do is figure out what is the node what are the nodes that are, are before and after the node that we want to delete? So the node that precedes B is A, and the node that follows after B is C. What we want to do is we want to change the next pointer of the one that precedes B 
to point to the one after it. That's what this is doing right here. It's pointing to the node after it. it's kind of skipping one over. And then the next thing that we want to do is we want to move the pointer, the next pointer from B, to not point to anything at all because it's going to be out of the list. And then once we do that, we can set this B node equal to none. It removes it from the list, and that is that. So that's the general procedure for removing an element from the list. Let's actually go to the code and see if we can actually implement that. So let's see. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to, let's break this down into specifics. We need to find the node in the list that consists of the key that we're looking for. So we're going to loop through the list and check as long as the head pointer that we start on is not null and the element of the node that we're currently on is not the element that we're looking for, we're going to move along in the list. So we start off here, the head pointer is the starting of the list. Is the data element of this node equal to the key that we're looking for, which is B? No. So we move along and then we move on to this one. And we say, okay, is the data element of this node equal to the key that we're looking for? Yes, it is. So we found that. And while we're looping through, what we want to do is we want to keep track of what the previous node is. So as we're moving through the list, we know what current node we're on because we're moving along with the head node, uh, the head pointer, but we also want to keep track of what node precedes the one that we're on. So we want to keep track of that. So what we can do is we can define a variable. Let's define, uh, let's define this thing prev, which is the previous node. We can set this equal to none initially. Uh, let's see, prev is equal to none. And then what we want to do is we want to iterate through this list while the head node is not none and while the data field of the nodes that we encounter are not equal to the key. So while the current node is not none, so while current node and the data field of the current node is not equal to the key that we're looking for, we want to keep moving along. What we want to do is we want to say that the previous node is equal to the current node and the current node is now equal to the current node dot next. So this is going to move the head pointer along. The current node is going to be the next one. The previous node is going to be the one that we were previously on. And as we move through this list, it will keep a track of the previous node and also the current one as well. So now what we're gonna do is we've exited the loop and we're gonna wanna check, did current node end up being null? So, because if the current node is null, then we know that the element isn't in the list. We've gone through, we've gone through all of the elements in the list and we can't find the one with entry, say, E. So we go through each of these. We're looking for, let's say, the entry E, the data field E, and we go through all the way and we encounter none. If that happens, we say that the element to be deleted is not in the list. So we want to say if the current node is not or is none then what we can say is we can just say return because that element in the list is not present. Otherwise, that element is present. So what do we want to do? Let's go back to the picture. The first thing that we want to do is, this is the previous node, in this case with example data field B. We want to set this node to point not to the one to be deleted, but to the one after it. So we want to say previous node dot next currently points to the one to be deleted. We want this to point to this next field. So previous node.next is equal to current node.next. And that will give us this figure here. That will give us this to point to this over here. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll say previous.next is equal to current node.next. And then what we're going to want to do is we're just going to go back to the picture, see what we have. So we have this picture here. We essentially want to, this can be done in a single step. We want to do something similar to what we did when we were considering the last step of this. We've moved the head, in this case, when we were concerned about the head, and then we wanted to remove this node from existence, so we just set it to none. That's exactly what we're gonna do here. We've moved the previous, uh, this next pointer to point to the one after the one to be deleted, and we want to set this thing to point to none. So once we do that, so we can say, uh, current node is equal to none. And once we do that, that should remove the element from the list. So let's go ahead, go down here, 
and let's follow the picture. So if we go to the picture here, let's say that we have a list that looks like this, which we do, and we want to eliminate this entry B. So we have this list that we've created A, B, C, D. Instead of inserting after a node, I'm going to comment that out, and I'm going to say list.delete node. I'm going to give it the data field of B, and then we're going to print the resulting list after. So I'm going to write that and go ahead and give it a run. And so if we do that, we see that we have the resulting list, which is A, C, D. There's no B that's present anymore in that list. So we've gone ahead and successfully deleted B from the list. All right, let's take a look at another deleting operation that we can do with a little bit of a twist on top of the one that we just did. So before we did deletion for a given node with a data field, now we want to do deletion for a node at a given position. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the linked list, let's say in this case, the position of the first node is zero, one, two, three, and so on. So we're going to assume that the prototype, the function prototype, will be given a position and we're going to want to delete the node at that position. So for instance, let's say we want to delete the node with position one. So in that case, that would be deleting this node here, this node with B, and that would give us the same list that we saw before in the previous example when we just deleted the node with data field B. But now we're, of course, deleting based on position. So much in the same way to the delete function that we had before, we're going to have two different cases. We're going to have a specific case for when the position is zero, that is when the node is the head of the list, and then we're also going to have another case when it's any other number other than the uh, position of the head of the list. So we're going to step through that. The general flow and general logic should be more or less the same with, a, a, of course, a little bit of a difference to account for looking for position now instead of the data field. But the general idea, if you understand the previous idea, should be pretty similar. So I'd encourage you before you watch this unfold, watch us go back to the Python code, go ahead and give that a shot and see if you can do it yourself. So I'll go back here, assuming that you paused the video and did it yourself or are stuck. Let's create delete node at position or at pause. This will take self and also a position. And this is going to delete the node at a given position. So what we can do is we can say, first of all, current node is equal to self.head. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check if the position that we are given is equal to zero, because that would indicate that the one node that we want to delete is actually at the head of the list. So if the position is equal to zero, uh, then what we can do is we can say self.head is equal to current node.next, and then we can return. So that's pretty similar if you go up here to this thing here. Of course, we're checking for the position now instead of the data field. Uh, this line is identical. We're saying that set the head now to the next node in the list because no longer does the first, the position zero entry in the list correspond to the head. The next one does. And then I guess what we should do is we should set the current node equal to none, which I forgot to do. Let's go ahead and do that. So current node is equal to none. Right, so that's that case. Now we have to worry about the case of any other position. So what we can do is we need to essentially go through the list and we need to do it in the same fashion as we did when we were looking for the data field. So as we go through the list, we're checking, is this node equal to the data field we're looking for? If it's not, go to the next one. In this case, we're going to say, is this field, not is this field, but is this node at the position that I want it to be at? If it's not, move on to the next one. So a similar type of logic structure there, but we're checking for a different case. So just like we did before, we also want to keep track of the previous node. So I'll set this equal to none, just like we did before. And I'll say while current node, so while the current node is not none, while we can continue to go through the linked list. And in this case, let's say count is not equal to the position. So count is not defined, but we need to define it. It's a variable that we'll keep track of as we go through this loop. So we'll set this initially equal to one because remember we've already taken care of the case where position is equal to zero. So we set it equal to one and then on every iteration of this loop, we'll increment it by one. And before that, what we'll do is similar to what we did before. So we'll say previous node 
is equal to the current node, and then also the current node is equal to current node.next. So this is moving us along in that list. And then once we do that, we're going to have a similar check. We're going to check if the current node is none. If the current node is none, then we know that we've exceeded the position. So basically we were given a position that was higher than the number of elements in that list. So basically what we can do here is we can just return. If you like, you can also print out a message stating that the position was greater than the number of ele elements in the list. You can do that or leave a comment if you think that's helpful. The next two steps are going to be exactly the same as what we had before. We're going to say previous.next is equal to current node.next and then we're going to say current node is equal to none. Because nothing really changes with that, all we're doing, I can even go back up to this picture over here, all we're doing is that if we not are given a node with data field B, but are given, let's say, a node with position one, we want to perform the same operations. Namely, we want to change the next pointer of the previous node to point to the next one of the current node, which is what's done here. And then we want to make sure that we eliminate the node to be deleted. And that is what is done in these two lines here. So same sort of structure there. If you understand this delete node function, this delete node at position is more or less a trivial extension of that. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you found it to be so, please do not hesitate to give a like, comment, or subscription. I greatly appreciate all of those very much. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks again and have a great day. Bye.